Neglecting the ways we harm by refusing to work together for the good of our neighbors. We hunger for you, and yet we seek fulfillment in all the wrong places. We feed our fear of scarcity instead of our trust in your abundance. We fuel our apathy instead of pouring ourselves out into service. We nourish our prejudices instead of meeting you in friendship with those we once called strangers. Forgive us, God, and free us to feast on your abundant love and to pour that love into the world as we commit to wrestling toward the fulfillment of your reign on earth as it is in heaven. Once God knows our need even before we ask, and the Lord is always ready to receive us. Even now, God's Spirit is coming to us that we may be filled with God's love and share that love with the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. For God will speak peace to God's people, to God's faithful, to those who turn to God in their hearts. Surely God's salvation is at hand for those who fear God, that God's glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. 
faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before God and will make a path for God's steps. The word of the Lord. We don't have any children in our sanctuary this morning, and so y'all will have to be our kids today. Anybody ever been to a potluck before? Do you have a favorite dish to bring to a potluck? Anything that's like a go-to for you, something that's easy? Buffalo Buffalo chicken dip, salad. I'm hearing things that, um, that don't have to reheat, so that's helpful. Chocolate chip cookies, excellent. My favorite thing to bring to a potluck, I'm thinking about about potlucks that happen, especially around the holidays, around Thanksgiving and Christmas. And my very favorite thing to bring is my dad's cranberry relish, because almost nobody thinks about cranberries. Cranberries tend to be like an afterthought on the holiday table, and almost nobody thinks of them. And this one is like a star recipe. It's it's fresh. It's not cooked. It's the, the cranberries aren't boiled, and it's got citrus and apple in it, and it's I mean, it's fabulous. Um, And I can, it's even better if I make it like two or three days ahead and then I can bring it in and it doesn't have to be reheated. It's fabulous. The potluck table would be really boring and really terrible if everybody brought cranberries or if my cranberries were the only thing there. Nobody would get filled up because it would just be this tiny little bowl of cranberries, right? This morning's gospel story, we hear uh, a story about Jesus and a whole mess of people who are gathered around. And it starts to get to nighttime, and the disciples look at Jesus, and they're like, listen, the nearest town is like a ways away, and all these people are going to be hungry. So why don't we just close up shop, send people home, they can come back in the morning, and they'll bring their lunches with them, and that's fine. And Jesus looks at the disciples, and he says, you give them something to eat. Now they look around at the world around them and they're like, there's no way, Jesus, we, we don't have enough with just what's, you know, what we brought with us, what's in our pockets, we don't have enough. And I think of that moment like um, being afraid that I'm the only one who's going to bring food to the potluck and that the only thing on the table is my cranberries. I'm really worried that nobody's going to get fed, right? And, but Jesus has faith. He has faith that if the disciples put forth what they have, that the rest of the table will be filled. We might be small in number. We might think that the work that God has for us to do out in the world, in the world but when we work together, when we show other people what we have, other people will be inspired to bring what they have as well. And together, we have enough, not just for everybody to have a little bit, but the scripture tells us enough so that everybody will be full. Today, we're going to have an abbreviated service. So we're just going to do prayers and communion and some singing. And then we're going to go out into the world because across the street today, there's an interfaith day of service. It's been happening since before we got here this morning. They started at 830 and folks were setting up well before then. It'll go toward um, till late in the afternoon. And it's people from all different faiths coming together to participate in projects that we agree further the work of the holy. We might not all agree in our faith. We might, not, um, we might not all have the same houses of worship. We might not all agree with each other on a lot of things, but we can agree that the projects that we're going to do today are going to be for the betterment of God's creation, of the holy, of the sacred in this world. And so after worship today, if you're here in the sanctuary or if you're at home, come join us on the New Haven Green, where together we will um, turn guns into farm implements, where we'll learn about peace in Israel and Palestine from, uh, from youth who were there, uh, where we'll clean up the sound together and we'll make blessing bags for people who are living on the street. And together, you know, even though we don't all have the answers, Each one of us doesn't have the whole answer. Together, when we offer what we have, there will be enough. It reminds me of this song that I learned when I was in uh, when I was in Jerusalem with an interfaith group. I was there with a group of Christians, Jews, and Sufis, or a sect of um, of the Muslim faith. And I learned this song that's from the Jewish tradition. 
Um, and the words in Hebrew mean, I will build this world from love, and you must build this world from love. And if we build this world from love, then God will build this world from love. So it goes like this. Olam chesed la 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 Olam chesed la 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 A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed, the crowd had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said, and he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. We'll enter our time of joyous concerns, and I'll ask first for prayers here in the sanctuary, and then I'll throw it over online. I don't think we have anyone who had volunteered to um, to handle the prayer time online, and so Stephen, if it's okay with you, can I just look to you to unmute people who have their hands raised? So folks who are online, um, raise your hand digitally or let Stephen know if you have a prayer request. Beloved, this is our time to share our burdens with one another so that we can share them and our weight is lighter here. And it's our time to share our joys with one another so that they're multiplied and we can um, get a glimpse of God's hope in this world. And so I ask you for whom and for what are you praying on this day? Let's be in a spirit of prayer together. Holy One, we give you thanks for the opportunity to lift our prayers to you. We know, God, that whatever we struggle with in this life, we are not alone, that you have walked this road with us, that you have, you've known us since before we were born and you walk this journey alongside us. God, we know that you know what it feels like to struggle, to yearn, to want, to desire, to be afraid, to be angry, to be despairing. And God, while the knowledge of your presence with us might not itself lift a burden, it is a comfort, God, 
to know that we are walking this road with you. And so we ask for your steadfast presence with all those whose names were lifted up in the sanctuary today and all those whose names were lifted online and for those whose names we are carrying quietly and tenderly in our hearts and we have not yet had the courage to lift to our lips. God, we know that you know these requests before we make them. We ask especially, God, we know that you are present in the times of change. And while change is uncomfortable for us, you have seen endless changes brought throughout the eons of creation. We know the newness comes out of change. And so we ask that you be present with those who are going through a change in life, of stage, of age, a change in relationship, a change in orientation to the world and to one another. We ask that you help ground us in what is true and what is right, and that you open us to the newness of change. We ask to God that you guide us in your ways so that justice and righteousness may kiss so that faithfulness will be a steadfast guide on our path. And so that together we may bring what little we have to offer, trusting that there is enough for everyone. We pray all these things in your many holy names. And especially in this sanctuary, we lift them in the name of your son who came to be with us, to teach us, to walk the way with us, And who taught us to pray, saying, Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved, with gratitude in our hearts for all that God has done for us and all that God will continue to do, we bring ourselves as offering. In our baptismal liturgy in the Methodist Church, we say we give our, we offer ourselves, our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our witness, and our service to the life of the beloved in the name of God. And so I invite you to give generously of yourself. Um, If you have a financial offering and you're online, uh, or if you're in the sanctuary, you're welcome to give it online at our website. If you're here in the sanctuary and you've brought an offering today, I invite you to drop it in the offering box that's on your right-hand side as you exit the sanctuary today. Whatever you give to one another and to the church today, I invite you to give it with gratitude.
As we present our offering to God, I invite you to please rise in body or spirit. Before we enter our time of communion, um, just a few announcements. As I mentioned earlier, I invite all of you to please join us after worship across the street at the New Haven Green, and they'll, we'll be out there all afternoon. So if you're online and you're inspired, we invite you to come join us down here for um, a day of service. Um, particularly those of us who are leaving the sanctuary right now after worship um, will stop first um, at the booth that's making blessing bags because our um, our United Methodist neighbors are there and we'll go meet them first and then we'll kind of spread out and see what else is going on on the green. Uh, invite you to join us for Bible study online. You can use the link that's in your bulletin for worship. That will work tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. And uh, for those of you who haven't yet scheduled a time to meet with me, if uh, the Sign Up Genius isn't working for you or you're looking for another time, um, simply email me uh, and I'll be glad to set that up for you. Any other announcements that I've missed? Fabulous. Um, and we'll bring ourselves to our time of communion. Again, um, if you're online, we invite you to grab whatever is common in your house. We here uh, in the United Methodist Church, we use bread and grape juice um, so that nobody um, should find a barrier to this table. This is God's table. It doesn't belong to me, it doesn't belong to the bishop, doesn't belong to the United Methodist Church, it is the Lord's. And God invites to this table anyone who believes that there is something here to find and with which to be filled. This table is open to anyone. We're never going to check your birth certificate or your citizenship or your high school diploma or your baptismal certificate. Anybody can come to this table. And so we invite you. The bread we'll use today is gluten-free, soy-free, dairy-free, egg-free, nut-free. So if you have any allergies at all um, and you have any concerns about the bread we're using, let me know so we can find an option that works for you. We'll take today by intinction. So I'll hand you a piece of bread. You'll dip it in the cup, uh, and then you can take it back to your seat to eat. right and a good and joyful thing, God, always and everywhere to offer our praise and thanksgiving to you. You who created the earth in all its fullness, you who created the people in all our diversity, you who created the vast diversity of life and called it all good. And so, God, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn.
is your Son, Jesus Christ. He was with us from the beginning, your word eternal, truth, justice, light. Through Jesus and through all the prophets, you call us to walk in your way. You call us to see a world more clearly. God, we know there are many paths to you, and we give you thanks and praise that we have been invited to walk this particular one. We know, God, that throughout history, you have fed us. You have watered us, you have nurtured us and nourished us, even when we believed there was not enough. Through Jesus, you showed us in spectacular wonder exactly how much love for the world can do. By the baptism of Christ's suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from allegiance to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, the thing that was common on his table. He gave thanks to God. He blessed the bread and he shared it with his friends saying, take and eat, all of you. This is my body, which is given for you. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, the thing that was common on their table. He lifted it up, he gave thanks, he blessed it and he shared it with his friends saying, take and drink all of you. This is my blood, a new covenant, a new promise, a new agreement that I will pour myself out for you. And so every time you drink this, remember what I offered and offer yourselves as well. And so in remembrance of all of these things, God, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving, a holy and living sacrifice in union with Jesus offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Spirit on us gathered in these various places. And God, pour out your Spirit on these gifts, the fruit of vine and field. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by, God, by your acts of sacrificial offering. By your Spirit, God, make us one with one another, one with the whole church, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes again in final victory and we feast at that heavenly banquet table. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God, now and forever. There is one loaf, so we who are many throughout the earth are one as we share this plate. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the love and the sacrifice of Jesus. As you feel moved, I invite you to come forward, receive a bit of bread, dip it in the cup, and take it back to your seats. Those of you who are online, I invite you to take whatever elements have been common at your table, knowing that in faith, God has made them extraordinary.
Will you please join me in this unison prayer? Gracious God, you have given yourself to us. Now we give ourselves to others. As a people of love, we will serve you with joy. Shine through us that we may share your love and spread your light wherever we go. Amen. Will you please rise in body or spirit for our closing hymn. My friends, I will build this world from love if you will build this world from love. And when we build this world from love, then God is building this world from love. Go in peace to love and serve. Amen. Amen.